Hey everyone, it's Sammy Chichester, Managing Editor of Revolver here, um, checking in from quarantine um, out in New York City. Um, we hope you're doing safe, uh, healthy, and all right during these times. Uh, today I'm joined, to, joined by the wonderful, talented, you know her, Christina Scavia from the Code of Coil. And we're going to be talking about all things shows um, and what we're going to be doing with, by talking about all things shows is we're, we're trying to raise money for Crew Nation, which is powered by Live Nation. They're doing a helping hand um, for venue crews and touring crews who've been displaced. And we depend on them to even go to shows and have these concerts. So if you can and are able in a financial position to donate below, please do so. But for this last show series that we're doing, we're going to be talking about all things shows. So please feel free to leave your comments in the, in the, in down below and let us know about your last shows or, you know, some of your favorite memories. So uh, without further ado, Christina, how are you, how you doing? We were just uh, talking about that Italy just kind of opened up its doors yesterday a little bit. Yes. Uh, yeah, we started yesterday. Uh, we went out for the first time. You could have uh, been out to visit a relative or for a small walk, and that was forbidden, sort of forbidden uh, up until the next week. You could only go out for groceries or if you had to uh, to go to work or if it was an emergency. And it felt super weird because I, I went out and I looked at everything like, like it was the first time I was going out. I mean, I remember I was walking in the grass. I was like, oh my God, the sun, the grass, a park. It felt surreal, surreal. How's, how's quarantine been, like, how's that life been for you? I mean, we've been, I think, you know, I, I don't know if I've mentioned, but again, we are like, I'm in New York City. So we were in some of the hardest hits areas. And, you know, we, I think we've been unlocked for about 10 or 12 weeks at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. as we're as of this recording so for us you know it's a very similar situation you can go out for groceries and things like that but um, you know not being able to to kind of get outside I mean what are some of the things that you're you're kind of miss doing aside from seeing the sun and stepping in the grass um, to be honest simply to go out because I mean I whenever I'm home from touring I enjoy to stay to stay home because I don't spend a lot of time here uh, but to kind of know that you can't go out is mentally challenging because even if it's just for a small walk, 15, 20 minutes and come back, it makes you feel that you, you, you are, you know, controlling your life. You can just go out and just like, I'm going to go for a walk. And it was extremely difficult for us, you know, to accept this. And we went uh, in the lockdown slowly because people didn't take it seriously, didn't take this virus seriously. So they kept on going out and gathering. And that was the reason for the lockdown because things started to get worse and worse. Because of course you need at least a week for the virus to, to, to show up and give symptoms if you have symptoms because you might not have any symptoms. So this virus is, is, is very dangerous. And that led us to, to get into this lockdown. So we started to have more and more restrictions up until we said, okay, we got to stay home because if we don't stay home, if we all don't stay home, it's going to be a way bigger problem. And the hospitals were collapsing because that was, that was bad. There was no space to cure more people. Uh, for instance, a lot of people don't get it that even if not related to the virus, if a hospital is completely full and overwhelmed, even if you break an ankle, you will not be able to be cured because there is no space. There is not an ambulance. There is not a doctor available for you. So the, the problem was big, but not everyone understood this. Luckily, you're... things are getting a little bit better, hopefully. Yeah. You know, I know every, I think... I, everyone all over the world. And it's unique to be able for us at least to speak to someone out in Europe who can give a different perspective. But, you know, hopefully the situation's getting a little bit, a little bit better and we're so. on the other side. Um, and hopefully we can uh, get back to a little bit more of our daily routines, because as you mentioned, you know, it, it does take a little bit of a mental toll. And I know some people are struggling and obviously out of work or, you know, just in some really difficult situations. So, 
you know, that said, um, you know, music has always been uh, something there for everyone. And um, that's the main, main reason why we want to do this last show. And, and, and I was wondering, you know, do you remember the last show you played? I do. <laughs> I do very well. It was in, um, in Chile, in Santiago, in a, a club called uh, Blondie. It was the last show of the South American tour that we did that touched uh, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. And that was uh, end of February. It was around the 25th, because we came back home on the 27th. So I believe that it was either the 25th or 26th. And that was the last time that I've been on a stage performing. And it feels like forever ago. The feeling is the strangest ever because, I mean, our category will be the last one to restart because, of course, concerts are about gatherings. And we need to be patient. I mean, I had a chat like not even half an hour ago, you know, with some organizers and they are just like, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what will be going on. Will it be up until the end of the year? Will it be up until next year? We don't know yet because there is no cure for the virus. There is no vaccine. So we are on a total stop. And we don't know what will happen. We just have to wait and see. Well, at least you were able to finish your tour. Um, yes, we had to cancel other two, two right, tours. Right, right. Sucked, but at least we've been able to, to finish that tour and we've been able to be back home because, I mean, I don't even know what, what could have been happened if we were just like stuck in South America for two months, let's say. I do recall, I think, when um, it's strange, but I, I sort of do in time recall the week that things started to shut down, all the tours started getting canceled and just unfortunately getting messages of people losing their jobs on the road. And, you know, with that happening, I remember Lacuna Coil actually being one of the first bands to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to put a halt on the upcoming tours. Yeah. Um, and then and obviously that was different in situations. Europe was, was a little bit of ahead, uh, you know, of the States at the time. But, you know, looking back at that show now, having not been on the stage since February, you know, does it, does it feel weird looking back at it now? Or do you have like a certain memory that sticks out? You know, I mean, playing South America must be a really special experience. Well, I remember every every show that we played on this length, you know, just the energy, the, the passion of the crowd, the interaction. I remember that they were singing super loudly. And that makes it even, even worse for me to remember concerts that we have been playing. Because I'm, I'm really wondering when will this happen again? Because how can we restart in safety? You know, can you think about a concert with only, I don't know, 100 people with a lot of distance in between them. I mean, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a real concert. It would be super strange. So I remember, I, rem I remember the energy of that gig. And, and to be honest, of every show in South America, because you know how Latins are, you know, very passionate, very, very noisy. And I remember that we had a lot of fun. I mean, this is what we love to do. It is not only a, a job for us it is our passion so to not to be able now to to play to sing to travel and meet our fans it's heartbreaking i mean it it certainly is and and like you said you know you see tours getting rescheduled but we really don't know uh when things yeah, are going to get rescheduled them but, but honestly i don't know what will happen no I mean, I mean, it's a huge question mark Right it's a day-by-day -day situation, I think, for everyone out there right now. But something, something I, I wanted to ask you about is, you know, obviously cruise venues, a lot of the places that we depend on to have these gatherings and see totally. these shows, they're Where's really the suffering. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, can you talk about that impact that that's had on Lacuna Coil, perhaps? And tell us a little bit about your roadies, who works with you, and um, you know maybe how long they've worked with you, or how special they are to you. Our crew is amazing because we like to think about our bands, and in the band, I also include everyone who works for us and with us. Uh, has to be a family. So of course, you know we want to work with someone who is extremely professional, uh, but 
we want to have someone that we like, that we can get along with, that we can live on the bus with, and that we know that we can rely on. So as soon as we work everywhere in the world, we try to have um, a very international uh, crew. So we have people from, uh, from Italy, we have people from the States, we have people from the UK. Uh, and depending on when we play, uh, we kind of switch one or two uh, elements in, in, this, in this crew. But they are all amazing, super fun to work with, but you know that when there is a problem, they're going to be there and fix it. And not only like prepare what's needed, you know, from, from the early morning while the musicians are still sleeping. Because that's one thing that people don't realize. Of course, you know, I have, I have the huge privilege of being, you know, the singer of the female singer of, of a band. And I might take the spot with the band. But as you said it, without the crew, there will be no concert happening because they wake up in the morning when it's really early. They take all the stuff out of the bus or out of the van or out of the car or whatever. They set everything up. They prepare everything. They check that everything is functioning. And to be honest, I mean, as a musician, you have to be ready for the sound check. And sometimes you don't even do the sound check because everything is set up so well that you know that you can just go for the gig. And then they are the last ones to go to bed because they have to pack everything to make sure that everything is not forgotten at the venue. They have to repack, you know, meticulously every little piece because they have to be ready for the day after. And it's crazy because most of the people that I know uh, that works in a crew, it's ready to party at night. And I'm like, damn it, I am only doing a concert a day. And at night, I just, just go to bed because I need to recover. And then I think about them and they're working so hard. They break that, their backs <laughs> in their jobs. So I have a huge respect of, of, of crews. I know a lot of people in different crews, not only ours, but, uh, but I am in love with our crew. Well, it sounds like they need a party when this is all over. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, only, I'm, the only, I'm the, usually the only one that says like, okay, bye, see you tomorrow. <laughs> they're probably relieving the stress and it, they're really noisy at night. <laughs> Hopefully when we can go back, you know, actually instead, I know that you kind of sort of returned uh, sort of off tour, but did, were you able to actually catch a show as a fan before the lockdown happened? No. No. No, no, no because uh, there weren't uh, shows already because, I mean, we came back. Uh, the lockdown started, um, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, March 8 or 9, around that day. So being back home on the 26th, 27, I honestly didn't go out in like a, a week. I just like did some stuff at home or I just went out to just for walks or just like seeing friends, but I didn't go, I didn't go to, to another concert. When you come home from touring, what do you, what do you do? Do you, do you have this necessity to unpack and kind of unwind or, or do you just sleep for a week? What do you do? <laughs> no, no, I always say I'm going back home and I'm going to start to arrange everything from tomorrow. But the very first thing that I do when I come back home, I just open the bags, throw everything in the washing machine. Uh, I, I put everything, you know, to dry because we, we're not big on dryers here in Italy. So we put all the stuff opened <laughs> uh, to, to dry uh, I, you know, maybe I might clean up, you know, if there's something like that I left behind, but uh, yeah, I'm, I, everything is kind of frantic. Is, is that the, the correct word? You know, it's just like, I have to do everything, uh, just because I want to do everything first and then relax a bit. I couldn't blame you. It sounds, it sounds like a, it's a long haul for the, for the fans. Everyone should know that, that you guys, everyone works really hard, band and crew. So you know, just a couple more questions here. You know, when, I guess this is all over, what are you looking forward to most doing? Well, just every gathering occasion that I have. I mean, I miss, I miss my friends. Now I can't go out to see my friends. You can go out to see 
uh, a cousin that you haven't seen in 20 years just because of the blood connection. But I am unable to see, you know, dear friend that, that it's a brother or sister that life gave to me. So I am very anxious to see them as well. Uh, I am anxious to, to go to uh, an event that includes people, whether it's going to a concert or going to the movie theater or going to a restaurant or, or going in a park without a mask on and gloves and distancing. Uh, I'm looking for the elim elimination of social distancing. That's when I will understand that everything is is gone <laughs> everything is solved i definitely think uh think we all are um so final final question obviously a lot of artists have been creating all sorts of things during quarantine whether it's music or they've been touching on art or working on projects at home and you're watching a lot of like instagram videos or youtube videos that have been coming out and stuff or just creating merch because obviously that's a big way that you guys can kind of recoup a lot of the money that's been lost during this time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is there anything that Lacuna is working on, or, you know, whether it's merch wise or things you've been doing that fans can check out and help be a part of and help kind of make sure you guys come back, whether it's the end of the year, next year, whenever you can, you know, what, what can fans do during this time to, to help Lacuna Coil? Well, we implemented our merch store. We have two merch store, two stores, one for Europe and one for the US. And we actually, uh, up until the end of last month, we gave a percentage to support uh, a hospital in Bergamo, which was one of the uh, cities in Lombardy that was heavily, heavily uh, hit. Uh, and for the States, we are giving a percentage to the Red Cross. Uh, so we are implementing our merch store and working on some projects. I mean, we're not writing new stuff for a new record because a lot of people are asking me, like, are you guys working on a record about quarantine? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no not about quarantine. This is something that I, you know, I want to not to think about too much at all. Uh, but we're working on some plans because, I mean, there was, some, there was always something on in the Lacuna in the Lacuna family, and we are so blessed because we have a huge community of fans supporting us and following us. Uh, we have been active on socials just because for us is the best way to interact with our with our crowd, with our you know extended family, just to let them know that we are here. Uh, try to be supportive, try to be uh, a positive influence in in all this, and you know, to let them know that we're going to be here for them, you know, with our music, trying to cheer them up whenever they want to, whenever they, they need you, they, they, they need to. And then, and I guess until you can physically see them, they can always put those, put those tunes on, whether it's, I always say like, Oh, put a record on. Give them on. Like, I mean, some people listen to records, but you can, you can always check out Lacuna Coil is the best part and you can always listen to them. So um, Christina, I want to give you the last word. I want to thank you for being part of the last show uh, with Revolver and, and taking the time out today. Um, but last words all yours. What, what would you like oh, to say? Thank you so much for, for having me. It was great to see you. I, I wish we could see each other in person and in the same place. But uh, we will postpone that because I think that it will happen one day. And I want to thank everyone for the support for the band, support the cause, because yeah, I mean, to support the crews is, is great because they are really a very, very important part of every single event, every single uh, concert that you see. You might not see them that much, but it's because of them that all this <laughs> happens. You're 100% right. And uh, I know we will, and we'll, we'll enjoy a coffee or something when this is oh, all over, hopefully. I <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Christina, thank you again. Uh, grazie mille. Thank you. Ciao.